everybody. This is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Today I'm going to show you how I do a, uh, I guess it would be a Thistle and Queen Anne inspired design. Not identical to how you might want to paint them, but I'm just going to give you my, my rendition of them, I guess, paint them on this glass bottle. I am going to be using a number eight front brush, quarter scruffy brush. Might be using this one, I'm not too sure, but a number one and a number two liner brush. These are all pod one stroke brushes. The paint I'm using is a combination of berry wine, wicker white, red violet, we'll say velvet, red violet, lime green, warm white, and thicket. Alright, so I've washed my bottle. If you follow me, you know that I actually repurpose and use a couple of my bottles over and over. So I clean them, paint on them, do my videos, and then I continue on with uh, cleaning them, doing my videos, painting, you know, etc. So, anyways, today I'm going to be doing it on a glass wine bottle. I am going to start by, I'm going to try this one first and see. I didn't really use it too much on my initial design that I do on paper, but all of my paints I use are folk art paints. There may be a mixture of enamels and multi-surfaces. It just depends on what I can find because I like certain colors and if they aren't available, I'm trying to get switch over to all multi-surface, but if I can't, then I you might find that some of them are enamels still. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do, do my thistle part and Again, this is just my rendition of it. The actual little pieces of, of uh, petals can be curly and they can come in in different directions and such. And I am just going to be painting them kind of random, trying to get the best coverage that I can get while I'm doing these because that's the biggest thing when you're painting on glass is to make sure that you have good coverage because if you don't have good coverage then your item is going to have some issues or possibility of issues as far as the design not staying on the glass. Now another thing you need to do or should do I should say recommend when you're cleaning your glass Use rubbing alcohol over it once you have cleaned it with soap and water. That helps just get any excess oils off of the glass. Cleaning it's important because it does allow the paint to adhere better. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of white here. Not really kind of blending it per se, but just adding a little bit more depth to the design itself because with these darker colors it can be a little hard to see. So you can add that in and then come back through and put some more purple back in so it just kind of intermixes in your design. Just kind of wild. It's almost like you have some wild hair. And you can do some curlier type strokes here that are wavier and come out more. I am just, I like what I'm doing right now. I'm happy with that, the way it looks. So I'm just going to keep it like that. I'm going to do a few more. On my design itself that I did on paper, I did more than what I'm going to do on this glass because I don't have as much room. So anyways, that's the reason for that. But I'm just going to start off here. Just kind of randomly pulling these petals in different directions. Again, some of them can be kind of curly, kind of curl around a little bit. 
and they don't have to be big. I mean, they can be different sizes, but they don't have to be huge as far as the size of the top of the of the flower itself. I think it's kind of a fun flower to paint. Kind of reminds me of somebody waking up with a crazy bedhead. Crazy head of hair. I'm going to go ahead and touch into the white here. I guess I'll just do in a little bit. Just real simple, kind of fun. Yeah, I, I really do enjoy gloss painting. I guess you probably have noticed that since my channel focuses on gloss painting. <laughs> it's probably not hard to figure that one out, huh? I do want them to be kind of wild and free. Kind of wild and free looking. Alright, and then I'm going to do one more. I'm going to work in my threes. And I think on this one I'll just do a little bit down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and start with the red, vel the red violet. Now I got myself wanting to say red, red velvet. And I apologize, my furnace is kicking on. Yes, it's still cold here where I live. I'm in Ohio. And I'm just very lightly pulling these little cute little petals to this flower. And I apologize too if my hand gets in the way. I always have to point out that I am a left-handed person doing painting classes. And one thing to mention with that is if I'm doing something in a direction that does not feel comfortable for you, then by all means switch and go the direction that does feel comfortable to you. Because I know just myself trying to learn from people, if it doesn't feel right it's because I'm going the opposite direction than what's comfortable for me if that makes sense and it can be hard to learn from somebody that goes the opposite direction than what you're comfortable with too so I apologize. Hopefully it makes enough sense that you can kind of work on your own and, and figure out what you're comfortable with. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is put in a couple of Queen Anne. And again, this is kind of my rendition of it. If you do yours or if you would do it differently, that's fine. I'm just doing it the way that's comfortable for me. So I'm just basically going to come down here at the bottom and pull up, come down here and pull up, and I'm just going to be doing some pulls here, just random little pulls to pull up. And if I want to tag into the other green that I've got here, I can do that, the lime green is what I'm referencing. Just make it a little fuller. Just kind of using the white too. And just using the number one liner brush. If you want to do this and stick with just using the darker greens, you can. That's purely up to you. I'm going to come down here and do another one. Again, I'm going to pull up. 
come back around here and pull up. I'm going to kind of lean it sideways a little bit. Come up. And then just, just keep putting in little strokes here. Uh, it has a little bit too much bite, so you can go back over it. Keep in mind too, like I said, when you're working with the bottle, you don't have a lot of space, so you might be a little crowded, and that's fine. I just want to point that out. You know, when you're trying to put this in, you're going to be, you know, kind of in close quarters, basically. All right. So my next thing that I want to do is, and I'm trying to think here. I want to. I'm going to go ahead and put in the bottom here. I just do a little bit and I'm going to swing the stem down. And whenever you do these, if you want to do it as if they didn't have a stem and you just do flowers or whatnot around it, that's fine too. You don't have to always have stems when I'm doing like a, a stem type flower. Or branch or whatnot doesn't always have to have the stem with it. And I'm gonna just throw in some little, little bit of lighter green here, just so you can see it. I'm gonna pretend that it goes behind this flower here. Come down here and do a little bit of that as well, and then I can stick it into the green. I'm gonna do a little bit of some poles like this. But then I'm going to take this little doodad and just do some little pieces that come down around like that. And I can take my flat brush once I've done that and just double load it. Actually triple load it because I want a little bit of light in there. And then you can just do little poles like this all the way down it. If you feel like it's too much white, you can you know, add some more green to it if you want. But I kind of like the white. Or you can intermix it. However you want to do it. And then come back up here and do the same thing. Just kind of fills it in a little bit the bottom so it's not stark. Alright, you need to pull some of these down using this one if you want or just strictly use that. It's fine. Either way. Alright, so I'm going to come back because I wanted to have the same kind of look. So I'm going to come back up here and just put some of these in here. Kind of like what I did before. And then go back to the flat brush. And then I'm going to do the similar little, little poles here. Like this. And then just pull them down. And repeat what I did up there. Or down here, I should say. And then just pull your little pieces. I mean, come out to the side. You don't have to be real rigid with it. Yeah, and then you just keep doing it like that. And you can come back in, again like I did at the bottom one, and, and do the same thing here with it. That's fine. Alright, so then the next thing, I'm just going to allow that a little bit of drying time, is to come in here, and you could use yellow too, but I'm, I'm just keeping the palette, color palette a little bit thin. You come in here and do kind of like your U-shape stroke, U-stroke. 
and pull it up like that. You can make them smaller if you don't want it to be so big. That's fine too. And I like to try to mention this every time I paint is the more opaque you make your paint, basically meaning that the thicker you put it on, the more durable it's going to be. So if you have good coverage, then you know that your paint's going to be a lot more durable. And especially if you're doing wine glasses or beer glasses, any type of a drinking glass, that's important because you want it to stay on when it's being handled. Okay, so on my initial design, I just did pulls like this over the bottom. And you can do that. You can do more of a kind of like a pointed type of design going down it. I'm just going to stick with my poles like I did here and did on my samples just because that's what I did on my samples. But there's different ways to do this so if you know a different way that's fine. Feel free to do that. Alright, so then I'm going to take my brush again and just pull the stem down. You might want to you can do a little thinner if you want. I'm fine with it being this way. So I might want to try to put a little bit more green in here. I think I like the darker green better. Now I'm just going to kind of pull it down into the stem like that. And then just kind of go down the stem just ever so lightly. And you could even round it off better, you know, if it was kind of not looking as round or the U, uh, I guess U shape is what I'm looking, term I'm looking for. You can do that too. And then we're going to do it up here. Just going to come down, see where we end up. Just pull it down. I'm going to go over that stem. That's fine. And like on this one, if you wanted to keep it this way, you could. I like to kind of try to pull them down into my stem so that it looks a little bit more natural, not like I have just a U shape there and then it's done. I think put some more strokes in there and then come down. You can make your make this thicker if you want. Or just keep it thin. Or just kind of random. Either way. And then do the same thing over here. I'm going to put it through here. I'm not probably going to see this very much because I'm going to be tapping in. But whatever. I mean, if you see it, that's fine too. Like I said, in these pieces, you can keep working with to get them however you want them to look. I mean, if you like just having a, a straight piece coming down from it, single little piece, that's fine. You can just keep it that way if you want. Starting to separate a little bit. It's one thing you have to be careful when you're working with glass is just keeping an eye on the uh, paint so that it doesn't start to separate. Okay, so let's get started on the tapping in, tapping in the green or the um, floral part of this flower. Now you can do one of two things. You can kind of do it into clumps and just you know go around and do a ball here, a ball there, you know wherever, or I kind of like it where you just keep filling it in. You leave a little bit of the greenery showing, but you just keep kind of lightly pound, pounding on it. 
and just kind of fill in. I mean, you can go outside of the green area too. It doesn't have to stay the actual shape of the of the little um, stems that you painted. It can come outside, be a little more rounded, a little more free, like that. And then if you want, you can come back into your darker green and then just come through and add some you know, throughout. And I think that's pretty. kind of gives it a, a pretty look. Like I said, I'm sure if you're a painter, you know a gazillion ways to do this. And, but this is just how, how I've chosen to do it. And it's simple, but just what it's meant to be. And I kind of like them to go, you know, they can touch, touch other things around them. That's fine. That's what nature is all about, right? Alright, so I'm just going to start and then just randomly some of these are thicker than others. Go up here. So I said with this one, it didn't really matter too much with the stem because you're going to kind of be painting over it. This flower is behind this one. But I wanted to at least show you how I paint it. Alright. So we're getting close to the end. I appreciate you sticking with me on this. I truly do. Hope you enjoyed painting it. If you paint it, I'd love to see pictures. Feel free to share it on my page, my Facebook page. And I, I do have the link, or I try to put the link down in there and hopefully it's correct because I at one point had a had an old an old link in there. So hopefully that's been updated. And I lied. I need to put some a little a few little petals in here. I almost forgot. Alright, so basically they're just really simple. And just your basic little little leaves. And you can Again, paint over stuff with them. You know, design part of the design that you've already painted gives it more of a natural flow when you do that. So you're not trying to keep everything separated. And here, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes, on a sneezing jag today. I don't know if it's my allergies. So just a few simple little leaves. You can do more, like if you wanted to put more leaves in before you started painting the design, you can do that. I'm just, like I said, I love leaves. So on my, my actual design sample, I did more. But I had more, more space to work with. So again, that makes a difference too. And on this one, I'm going to go back over it. I don't like it to be so streaky. You're just keeping it simple. Truly, truly just keeping it simple. They can be single colors. They don't have to have, be double loaded or triple loaded. You can just have a single color leaf. That was perfectly fine. I didn't get that in there very well. I got a little crisper. I, think I need to get some new, new brushes. I'm making this a little bit more difficult, but anyways, you get the gist. That's not really as thick as I want. I didn't really want it that thick. I can pull it off. Put another leaf beside it. Even put another leaf up in here. You can use different colors of greens. You can even add some brown to them just to give it a, a good contrast so they're not all looking the same. But I'm going to stop for there. I think that's pretty. Just one other thing. I keep saying that and then I'll go on. If you wanted to add some dotting to this, you could put some dots up in here. Just kind of sporadic. 
or you could do the whole thing by dotting. I'm just going to put a few little dots, which just kind of random, throughout the, the design. You could just even maybe fill in some on a leaf. And just kind of tap them in every so often. It's just, as you know, you can leave it out if you don't like it. Just an idea. Just a thought. And that's kind of a thick dot, but it's okay. Anyhow, dotting can give it a little bit more interest. Or, or not. Alright, so I'm going to stop there. Truly am. I'm done. Alright, if you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And last but not least, if you would please share this on your social network with all your family and friends, I would appreciate it greatly. I am trying to grow my channel. Any suggestions, comments, please put those down below. And until the next time, I appreciate you. You stay safe and have a good one. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be, in the great outdoors, forever free. to be